Well, good morning. Hope you're all well, you YouTubers. Another day in paradise for us truck drivers in the United Kingdom. Um, out on the road as normal, keeping the UK, keeping Britain moving. Um, <coughs> it's really nice, I suppose on the plus side of this coronavirus, um, trying to look at the positivities here rather than the negativities. It is really difficult. Um, very difficult for people who are working you know when they're being furlonged and laid off and it really is um, totally affecting the economy at the moment um, now, now now before this coronavirus happened uh, us truck drivers used to get a bit of a hard time you know bloody hell why is this truck going down this road Christ why can't they do the deliveries at night when no one's on the road oh my god he shouldn't be coming down here oh he's parked here you know Unfortunately, it's the nature of the beast. Uh, people are starting to realise now how important trucks are in the United Kingdom, in the world. You know, without trucks, nobody in this, this, in this country would be able to do absolutely jack shit. You know, you're shopping, you're buying cars, you're buying milk, um, farming, everything is done and delivered by trucks and people don't realise that. You know, when you're picking up your eggs from Tesco's in the morning, you know, they don't just arrive by a magic ferry or a Sikorsky jet or a helicopter. They arrive by truck. Um, so, you know, I, I'm going up the motorway now and I can see billboards over the top of the motorway bridges saying, thank you to our HGV drivers. And for that, guys, I thank you because people are realising now that what an important role we actually do in sustaining the economy and also for keeping Britain moving. You know, it doesn't matter. Anything you put your hands on, buy uh, your cars, anything is brought by truck. So thank you to all these people who have shown us a little bit of um, consideration now. Um, you know, since this coronavirus has started, um, I I've been out every day. And like I said, I do I do molasses, which is, which is a byproduct of sugar from Tate and Lyle, and then that's delivered to the mills that do all the animal feeds. You know, people don't realise that um, animals need this: horses, race horses, chickens, God knows what else. Everything that we eat—not horses, but some people might do in France. But you know, everything that we eat with the chicken, the poultry, the lamb, uh, the beef, etc is fed you know people think that that these just eat grass well yeah obviously they do but they also have to have nutrition or supplements and this sugar is made into um, like cakes and pellets and everything and that gives the animals their energy etc etc so it's done for animal feeds um so yeah it's been tough um and you know it is it's it's a frightening environment at the moment but the problem is we truck drivers have to keep going. Not every truck driver, but the majority are going. You know, your Tesco's, your Lidl's, that's all got to be delivered. The animals have still got to be fed, even though we're on this crisis. Um, so thank you very much to all the people that have been um, giving the big thumbs up for truck drivers. Um, you know, it's difficult, you know, especially when I, I'm away all week. You know, I, I, I don't see my family from when I go to work on a Sunday night or a Monday morning, whatever it might be. I don't see them for the whole week. You know, I live in this truck. Um, hence the reason why our company makes sure that we've got decent trucks. I mean, it's all leather in here, as you saw in the video before. I've got every single extra possible um, uh, known to man in this truck because I live in it. I do not get out of this truck. I spend 80% of my life, and I'm a married man, in this truck. 80% of my life is spent in this truck. Um, so yeah, um, but that's just the nature of the beast. So if anybody wants to come into the industry, you know, unless you're doing day work and you've, you're not going to get a truck like this, you're just going to get an ordinary everyday delivery day truck. That's a bit different. But when you're doing what we're doing, which is called tramping, means that you're in the truck from a Monday to a, a Friday and then you go home a weekend. Um, yeah, you need the extras. Obviously, it'd be very difficult. Um, if you didn't have your microwave to heat your food up and you had to eat out all the time. Now imagine this, you know, we have to park up on the evenings and, you know, 
we try and park in lay-bys. You park in a lay-by, it can be a bit precarious. You know, you've got people who are trying to steal your diesel. <laughs> break into your truck, you know. It's difficult to break into my truck as in the trailer because it's a tank. There's not exactly a lot you can steal. But if I was on what we call a curtain cider or a flatbed truck, what they do is they slit the side of the curtain, look in, and rob you. You know, uh, thousands and thousands of tens of thousands, sometimes millions of pounds worth of gear goes from the side of the road. Uh, insurance policies have to pay for it and everyone has to increase their premiums, you know. So, you know, it's difficult in the United Kingdom to park your truck up safely. In Europe, it's okay, you know. If you're on the motorway, when I did international work, um, and going to Greece or France, Paris and uh, Portugal or wherever it might be, um, you know, as soon as you've got over the other side into France, into anywhere in Europe, Everything's designed for trucks because they understand that trucks are a vital element of the economy. So you get any services you go and you don't have to pay to park. You know, the, the, they've got the showers, they've got the restaurants for truck drivers. It's all geared up. There's plenty of laybys everywhere you go to park trucks, and it's it's good. The United Kingdom we're sort of slightly backward on that. You know, we have the services and all that, but they want to charge you thirty-eight pounds to park your truck. Well, obviously, we get the money back if we need to do that. But the problem is, with the haulage company, the haulage companies, transport companies as a whole at the moment, it's difficult. That's thirty-eight pounds. If you did that five days, it's hundred and sixty, hundred and seventy quid to park a trucker um, and, and sleep in the truck overnight. It's wrong. It's really wrong. And I'm hoping that Boris. Uh, he's a great guy. I like Boris. He's starting to do things. He's trying to implement another one thousand five hundred truck stops. You know, in the old days, a truck stop was predominantly for truck people. Um, the food was subsidised, it was cheaper, you got a good square meal for not a lot of money. But now people are cashing in on it, you know. The capitalist, capitalism is coming in, they're trying to charge you more because they realise that trucks need somewhere to park. So it's an extra way to get money, 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 money. You know, as truck drivers in the UK get a hard time. Uh, but I'm not going to go on any more about that. Um, so basically that's just a little bit about the industry um, what I'm going to go through is uh, the next video I do is going to be about driving hours as I've promised um, so this is the weekly driving hours that we can do and how much work we can do in a week so you know we can do uh, like I said before 56 hours is constant driving um, not constantly but over a five or a six sorry a six six day period the maximum we can do is 56 but the maximum we can do as in with driving and other work is 60 and that's pro ratted over I think it's 17 and 26 weeks now um, because of the EU regulations and um, I don't know who brought it in you know they were trying to say that they want truck drivers to work a 49 hour a week well hey ho it's impossible you know how on earth you know if, if I came into work at six o'clock but basically nine hours later I need to be clocking off five days a week how on earth can you do that on a truck you know Britain would definitely stand still um, so we're you know the ways around that is they give us you know we're not allowed to work more than 60 hours and it's pro routed over so many weeks so just in case one day you work 62 the following week sorry you work I don't know 49 it's, it's average day but the ministry really are, I, I, in my opinion are not really that interested in that aspect of it all they're interested in is that you've done your daily checks and you're doing your daily rest periods so on a day this is where it gets complicated again on a daily rest period once we've finished our work uh, we've got to take 11 hours break off before we can put our card in and start the next day so remember this is in a 24 hour period so um, if you've done um, 11 hours you have an 11 hour break that's okay but you can reduce it down to nine hours three times a week now this is when it starts to get a bit complicated this is why i'm going to do a different video on this but just to give you a, a little bit of an insight you can reduce that down to nine hours in a 24-hour period um, so yeah it starts to get a little bit complicated but I will show you that on the next video um, so that's going to be driving hours 
um, and I'll catch you later on that but stay safe people and um, I'll speak to you later bye